So let's look at those things we've seen so far then. There's four types of javelin at launch. I think we might see another one or two appear throughout the game's lifespan. But we've got the Ranger, Colossus, the Storm, and the Interceptor as well. They're all unique, and they carry a sense of individuality in comparison to each other, which is nice. It's expected, but it's nice. The Colossus, for example, feels heavy and strong, and the Interceptor feels incredibly smooth and sleek to use, for example. You've got the Storm, which probably isn't best suited in the heat of the battle, and is maybe going to turn into a support type class and yeah i like the fact that they all look like they're going to feel completely differently to each other the names are They've... a bit of a giveaway as well aren't they to what they do <laughs> yeah exactly colossus which is going to be the one hiding at the back sniping it's um <laughs> it's the standard kind of things we've seen before but look it works really well so i've, I've got no problem with that whatsoever and all the classes have got their specific abilities and I think it will be a lot of fun to experiment with how they're going to work in tandem with each other. I actually think it's going to be really difficult to decide which Javelin I'm going to main when the game first launches, and I'm sure I'm not the only one who thinks that. You start off as the Ranger, and then you know as things progress early game, you're going to have the choice to to unlock the different paths. So... I have no idea how I'm going to make my decision. I think I'm probably going to go with the Storm to begin with, but pff, I guess watch this space. I, I don't know for sure. Yeah, it's always good, though, to have options, isn't it? Especially in games like this. Yeah, definitely. And it's funny you mention options there, because one thing that I'm really pleased that they've included is the preset custom loadouts for your gear. So whilst it doesn't particularly affect the, the Javelin as such, it's it's more for sort of your your gear, your weapons, you know, it gives you that sort of on-the-fly flexibility, and you don't feel so sort of restricted within your loadouts. Thinking, you know, you're gonna have to be sort of restricted within that same. This is the gun I'm running in slot one, slot two, and it's gonna be forever before I can change that, or it's gonna take me a lengthy pause to swap around all my equipment and find out where I left something before. Mm -hmm. It's it looks really cool, and I think games like this need features like that hey you want to use loadout one it's already there it's preset loadout two and that that's a really great feature in my opinion like i said it's that on the fly feeling of flexibility and you don't have to sort of feel bogged down changing in and out between battles or missions you can get to it quickly which is great yeah it looks like they've approached difficulty a bit differently than in anthem yeah i think so and I, I think we'll talk more about the mission styles later on. I know Sud's got some views on that. But, I mean, in summary, for the time being, we know we've got easy, medium, and hard. And the end game also has the Grandmaster difficulties, too. And personally, this is where I absolutely agree with our commenter from last time round in, in the snippet that we released uh, regarding their Diablo reference. And I will come back to that reference again shortly, but... I really like this and it adds to the replayability and it should hopefully provide sort of something for everyone at every time, which is surely something that everybody wants. Yeah. Well, you'd you think so, wouldn't you, really? Yeah. It seems to be a positive. Definitely. And I'll sort of put out there sort of at the beginning so we can get this out of the way. I haven't forgotten about my Mass Effect comment from last time out I'm going to try not to pay sort of too much reference to it as things go by, so I'll sort of nail it for the time being. When I see the sort of fast and fluid combination of the weaponry and the abilities, it screams Mass Effect to me. And that's a good thing. I'm definitely not criticizing that. When I look at the weapons in particular and the design that they have, and as, as a random example to pull out of nowhere here, some of the detail that I've seen when aiming down the sights of a sniper rifle, or the way the pistols look when you hip fire them. L just look at it. I mean, the, the the enemy health bars, the shield bars, the the armors, the way it's sort of distinguished with the different colors. Look at how the buffs and the debuff abilities work um, for for each javelin. These things could have been pulled directly from Andromeda or any other Mass Effect, and this is a really good thing. It's something that's been strong. Every time it's been present, every time Bioware have used it, and that's where I get that from. And again, that's a 
good thing. I'm not saying that's negative in, in any sort of way, shape or form. Yeah. And I, 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 I'm quite a big fan actually of how the design and layout of that sort of thing, uh, stuff is on Mass Effect. So I'm definitely a fan of that. Yeah. I think with the combat in particular, that's what says Mass Effect to me rather than anything else. And I think the combat in Andromeda was really good. Actually, it's one of the best points, uh, parts of the game. Yeah, um, let's just stay away from the sort of graphical design and, and the things that happened within the programming and coding, but the, the combat was strong, and the, generally speaking, Mass Effect combat has always been strong for its time. You look back now, sometime, some things sorry, might look a little bit dated, but at the time... Mm, Ball Mass it, Effect 1. I don't know, even at the time, I'm not sure if I liked it. <laughs> yeah, Mass Effect 2, I mean, though, what an improvement. Yeah. Two was was super strong, and three story aside, uh, we're focusing directly on the combat. It it worked, so mm -hmm. I'm pleased to see sort of Bioware bringing this forward. And I, I'll just sort of finish off there by saying it's not just Destiny or Mass Effect, by the way, of comparisons. I mean, we we could go into this in in so much more detail, but when I think we all saw the the giant bullet sponge swarm tyrant boss. The display was more akin to a, a Lost Planet or a Monster Hunter World style boss. So there's definitely more general comparisons out there if you if you really wanted to make them.